Well, good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, welcome you to Highland Avenue Fellowship on this beautiful Sunday morning, this last Sunday in the month of April, in the year of our Lord, uh, 2021. I hope this finds you well, and thank you for taking a few moments to join us. And let us invite God into the space where we are right now. We know he's everywhere, but it, we need to recognize that too. So let us pray together. God, thank you for drawing us uh, to this time of worship together as we look at your word and see how that would apply to our lives. But more than that, just know that we may not be together physically, but God, we are together in the spirit and you're, you are with us right now and, and uniting our hearts together. So be with us during this time and, and speak to our hearts your word afresh and anew. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh 
Again, welcome, and, and uh, we're glad that you are here with us today. I want to share a very familiar passage of Scripture, and I think if there's one Scripture uh, that I had to pick to base my life on, uh, it, it would be this one, and that's the 23rd Psalm. You might know it by heart, uh, but hear, hear it again uh, in this new and, and fresh way. This I'm reading from the English Standard Version this morning. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
Well, these are very comforting words that oftentimes are used in a memorial service or funeral. Uh, it's good to read when we don't know what to, to read. It, it, it shows us how God desires to work in our lives and how he does indeed work in, in our lives. I, I use it in my own life. When I don't know what to believe about something, I read through this psalm, and I find comfort, and I find direction. So let's unpack this a little bit and see how it might even apply to us. And Isaiah the prophet noted that all we like sheep have gone astray, each one seeking uh, his own way. And, and Jesus uses that uh, description a lot when he says that he is the good shepherd. We see that in John chapter 10. He said, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. So sheep and shepherds uh, are a great example of what our relationship with God ought to be. Now, here's some things about sheep. Uh, I don't know a lot. I don't pretend to, but I do know this, that Sheep tend to scatter. They wander. They're looking for food and, and literally greener pastures. And they're oblivious to much of what goes on around them. And they get themselves into some predicaments. Uh, I've seen them with their heads stuck in a fence before. Uh, simply because they uh, just didn't think ahead. Uh, but they are helpless too against predators sheep can't really defend themselves that well uh, they are uh, helpless wolves can separate them their only hope is to be bunched together in a number and and but any that lag behind are apt to get picked off and so sheep don't think beyond the moment right now is all there is and they don't, they don't worry about tomorrow they're just worrying about that grass that they want to get right now and and, and they're totally totally dependent on the shepherd. They cannot fend for themselves whatsoever. So when Jesus says we're like sheep, you know what? We really are. We're always looking for something better. We're always looking for greener pastures. We're looking for the church where the pastor is different. We're looking for the, the, the better this, the bigger that, the, something that we, beyond what we have. We, we don't plan ahead. We just wander. Um, yeah, and we're totally dependent on God because we sure can't make it in this life. And so I guess if, if we're going to be like sheep, we have to ask ourselves, who is our shepherd? Are we trusting in the Lord or are we trusting in ourselves? Uh, who are we following? Uh, because really, the, we, we, we can pick the shepherd we want to follow. And here's what I find when I try to be my own shepherd. I, I tend to I get scattered. Scattered in my thoughts, scattered in my direction, scattered in my purpose. And I, I find that I get tossed about with storms and, and drama and things that happen in my life. And, and it just, you, you begin to be a mess. You, you find yourself categorized by fear. Uh, you're afraid of what people are going to think. You're afraid of... of what's going to happen, but you don't plan for anything to happen. And it just, um, life just happens around you. It happens to you and you're totally victimized by it. Um, and then we, we get ourselves in these messes and then ask God, God, why, why did this happen to me? Why have I gotten myself in this, in this place? Why, why? And then it's like because I'm trying to be my own shepherd. And I, I wandered and I got into a pasture I wasn't familiar with because the grass was greener and now I want God to bail me out. Has, has that ever been you? Well, probably more times than we care to admit. But what happens if we declare, and that's what this psalm is, the Lord is my shepherd. And here's what I want you to do today is to declare the Lord, your shepherd. Do it again. Yeah, you came to Christ a long time ago and, and, and you've tried to follow God faithfully, but there's still times that you're your own shepherd. And so today we're going to declare Jesus as our shepherd, the great shepherd. And here's what you can encounter. And this psalm teaches us this. That in verse 2, 
you can look to God as your source of peace and abundance. Abundance is not in the accumulation of things. True wealth is not in how much money you have or, or fine home or any of that. True wealth is knowing that you have eternal life with God and the peace of God that passes all understanding guides your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So your peace and abundance are in Christ. In verse 3, you can count on God as the good shepherd for restoration. The times that we go our own way and we get ourselves in these messes, and maybe that's you've been in a mess of addiction, maybe you've been in a mess of financial trouble, maybe you've been in a mess in your relationships, but know that God is a God of restoration. He can make you whole again. He can put your life back together again. We have that. Another thing we, we can count on God for is direction. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. So restoration, direction, guidance, these are all coming from him. And he says, I prepare a table before you in the presence of the enemies. We have confidence in God that maybe we're facing an enemy of sickness, maybe an enemy of of somebody that hates us or an enemy of all kinds of stuff, whatever your enemy is, know this, that in the midst of what you're going through, God has prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You may not get away from your enemies, but you'll have confidence knowing that you can trust God in all things. David goes on to write that your rod and your staff comfort me. Now, what does he mean by that? Well, take a look at a shepherd's staff, and you see that, that it provides two purposes. One is the rod provides correction and protection. It provides correction where when the sheep gets out of line, a little tap from the, from the rod of the of the uh, shepherd brings the sheep back in line. And certainly God's word does that for us. It, it, uh, it serves as that guide, but it also serves as that, that rod that, that corrects us in our beliefs and in our attitudes. And it, it protects in that when the enemy comes against us, that, that rod not only taps us back into line, but it pokes and, and wax the enemy that is coming against you. God not only corrects you, but he protects you. And then the, as the staff, it provides direction and comfort. So the sheep is wandering, but the staff just guides it in the right direction. And it, it supports. So we use God's word as both a staff and a rod, but also know that God guides through the Holy Spirit that you'll you'll hear that voice if you are tuned in to God's Holy Spirit he'll direct your steps he will guide you and even when you mess up he will guide you back and that, that's a good promise that we have now we live in very uncertain times uh, I'm in a uh, one of the mainline denominations and we're certainly uh, in a very heightened time of uncertainty and distrust and we see that in our nation as well and maybe even in our own families or in our own self we have a lot of uncertainty and, and we, we're wary wary of trusting someone else so when you don't know what to believe and you feel like there's no one you can really trust, I want you to grab hold with both hands these thoughts. One, know that God loves you. There is no situation in which you find yourself, there is no condition where the love of God will not embrace you. Know that the um, no one can snatch you out of the Father's hands. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. And secondly, know that, that the Lord will always be with you. 
Jesus said it, lo, I am with you always, even till the end of the age. And here we see that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, that he will always be with us, that we, we don't have to worry about being left out. And no matter what you face, you don't face it alone. God is there with you. And third, know that God is not going to abandon you. That he will guide you through this thing in your life you're going through right now. That you're not going through it alone. He will guide you. He will protect you. He will surround you with his love. So when you don't know what to believe, believe that God loves you. When you don't know who to trust, know that you can trust God. Because he is your shepherd. He will lead you. He will guide you. That's something to grab on to today, no matter what you're going through. Can I pray with you? Dear God, in these crazy and uncertain times in which we live, help us to grasp the truth of your love for us, your provision for us, your guidance of us. And I would pray, God, for those that are going through very difficult times right now that maybe need a physical healing or, or an emotional healing, healing in relationships. We pray that, that uh, you will work and restore what the enemy has stolen from us. We ask you to unite our hearts together as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for being with us today, and, and I, I want to encourage you to continue to look online uh, at our website and, and to be part of what's going on here. Also invite you to continue your faithfulness through your giving. Uh, we've been coming through some, some challenging times, and, and uh, we thank you for your faithfulness. And you can always give online through the giving app that's on our website. You can also uh, do a bank draft. You can make check out, mail it to the church, or drop it off in our, in our box outside the door. Uh, but we're happy to, to be here for you, and as long as we can, we want to do so. But uh, we do need you, too, to, to step up and be with us. So thank you for your faithfulness, and God bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, and give you peace.
Jesus, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms all fade away, but there's something about that name. But there's something